What is the accomplishment that you've been the proudest of? Why were you successful? This question is one that haunted King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon. We've seen up to this point a number of stories illustrating the importance of putting God first. We've also seen a secondary theme that God is at work behind the scenes, appointing leaders of nations and guiding international politics towards a climactic worldwide restoration. This is not going to happen by human brilliance, but by the direct intervention and creative power of God. Every now and then, God pulls back the curtains and allows selected individuals to see some of the future details. Nebuchadnezzar is one of those favoured individuals, not once, but twice. His dream of the metallic image, he asked all his wise men to unravel it for him, but only Daniel was able to. You would think with that success, on the second occasion, the king would call for Daniel first. But he called for him, but only as a last resort. He tried all his other advisors first, and when they all failed, again, only then did he send for Daniel. At least he remembered his dream this time. Daniel hesitated to explain it, but he was encouraged to speak up. The dream spoke of a large tree that covered the earth, under which all manner of life found food and shelter, but it was cut down. Daniel explained that the dream pointed to the king losing his rulership because of his corruption and oppression. Nebuchadnezzar was a prolific builder, but to achieve all that he did, he must have press-ganged thousands of unsuspecting and unwilling workers into forced labour for his dozens of concurrent building projects. It's no surprise then that Daniel singles out the sin of exploiting or neglecting the poor. The warning of lost rulership must have sobered the king to begin with, but after a while he shrugged it off. A year later, the king, from the height of his palace, looking down across the city that he had built. And as he gloats in his accomplishments, he hears a supernatural voice telling him that he has just lost his kingdom and that he will lose his mind and go and live with animals as one of them. And sure enough, for the next seven years, he chewed grass and got around on all fours. But the dream said that when the tree was cut down, which was a metaphor for him losing his kingdom, it was to have a steel and bronze band around its stump to protect it. No one would kill him and take the throne, as it was believed that the demon causing the insanity would then inflict the murderer. So his kingdom was quite safe while he was absent from it. But get this, when he looked down with pride on his realm and gloated in self-exaltation, he became an animal. But when, as an animal, he looked up into the face of God, he regained his humanity. God specializes in doing that for people. He takes them out of the mud of their degraded life to set them on their feet and give them a new start. The king's reaction to his restoration is heartwarming, completely different to his earlier decrees where he enforced God's superiority. In chapter 1, when Daniel and his friends were found to be ten times better than his own wise men, he didn't react. When in chapter 2 he heard Daniel explain the forgotten dream, he said religious words, but there was no personal commitment. Then in chapter 3, after the three boys come out of the furnace with not even the smell of smoke on them, he simply breathed out threats against anybody who would speak against their God. 
So the king previously had three chances to see who God really is, but he missed out each time. But God does not give up on impossible people, so he gave him another chance. Becoming like an animal was that only thing that could convince Nebuchadnezzar that God indeed does rule over all, and his dominion endures from generation to generation. The fact that the king sends out a royal epistle showing the details of his fall, something not seen elsewhere in ancient literature, where all the kings build themselves up as superheroes, this demonstrates the genuineness of this king's conversion. Despite his impossibly bloated pride, God gradually wins him to himself. And God has a way of humbling us when we get too inflated with our own accomplishments. After all, if it wasn't for him, how much could we really achieve anyway? <laughs>